promise of space to all and lay the way for generations to come. When our descendants look to the stars, perhaps from a rocky moon or colonies floating in open space, they'll remember this time. When they reflect on where it started, they'll remember this place. Touchdown. And when they honor those first explorers who said, let's go, they'll remember these bold steps. We are of blue origin. And this is just the beginning. Good morning, everyone. A big welcome from us at Blue Origin. We're getting ready for New Shepard's 11th mission to space, known by Team Blue as NS-11. The clock is at 19 minutes and 50 seconds until liftoff here, ticking down to what should be another exciting launch. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ariane Cornell. It's to be a pleasure. It's a pleasure of mine to be back behind the desk today. Uh, it's also a pleasure to be here when it's a bit warmer uh, than the last time we saw you back in January. And since I'm outside, believe me, it's a really good thing. Before we start off today, I do want to say hello to my Blue Origin team back in Kent, Washington at our headquarters. Good morning, guys. I know it's early. Hope you've got your coffee. To our team here in Texas, hello. You're about to launch a rocket, of course. And our team in Cape Canaveral, Florida at our new Glen Rocket Factory. And last but not least, to our newest location, Huntsville, Alabama. We've got a small but growing team down there. They're about to build a new rocket engine factory. Okay, let's get into today's mission, NS-11, the 11th mission in this new Shepard test program. Now, the rocket that's out there on the pad, she's getting ready for her fifth launch to space and back. That, guys, is a reusable rocket. That rocket has 38 payloads on board. That is a, uh, a record for us on New Shepard. And we're also talking today about how we're taking one step closer to flying people on board uh, New Shepard later this year. Now, before we get into all of the details of today's mission, why don't we get everybody back on the same page by starting off with a recap of NS-10, the last mission. So on the last mission, we also had payloads that went up. Uh, they were from NASA's Flight Opportunities Program, and let me tell you, it was a picture-perfect flight. Let's show you some highlights. All stations, this is the Flight Director on Channel 1 with ready report for a terminal count and launch. Capsule. Go. Booster. Go. go. Ground. Go. New Shepard is go for launch. Five, four, and then start. Two, one. Touchdown. Let me tell you guys, that never ever gets old. Do you see the new camera shot that we've got of the booster coming back down to Earth? And then, of course, for me, my favorite part of every one of these launches is watching that capsule come down for a nice, soft touchdown in the Texas desert. Now, what we're looking for today on NS-11 is much of the same uh, in terms of a flight and soft touchdown. Now, to get to NS-11, we've actually racked up quite a few milestones, consecutive successful milestones to get here. 10 successful launches, nine successful back-to-back -back booster landings, three successful escape tests, and 11 crew capsule landings, of course, if you include that first pad escape test from 2012. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got more milestones to come in the near future. Over the next several months and years, we got a lot of activity down here at Blue. Let me tell you, first of all, we are ramping up to be able to hit those milestones. When I started five years ago, we were at 300 people. Right now, we're at 2,000 people. For those of you at home, if you want to plot that out, by the end of the year, we're going to be at 2,600 people. So we are growing fast. Most of the growth has happened up in Kent, Washington at our headquarters. Also means we're going to get a new headquarters building shortly here, which I'm pretty stoked about because that's where I'm based. 
Down here in Texas, we're also ramping up because we got human spaceflight coming up by the end of this year. We also are qualifying our rocket engines down here on our test stands. Down in Florida, we've got our big New Glenn rocket factory. New Glenn, of course, our orbital rocket that's coming online in 2021. We're filling this huge factory that we've taken over about a year, year and a half ago with big machinery to build that big rocket. And then just eight or nine miles as the crow flies from that factory down in Cape Canaveral is the launch complex that we're also building out. And last but not least, as we mentioned, Cape, uh, down in Huntsville, Alabama, our newest location, we are going to be building the BE-3Us and BE-4 engines at a new state-of-the-art location. Now, just a, a couple of miles from there at the Marshall Space Flight Center, we're also going to be taking over Test Stand 4670, where, where we're going to be testing those engines that are coming off the line of the engine factory. So, uh, in case you didn't catch it, we've got a lot coming down the pike. And you know what? To be able to do it, not only do we need to grow with a lot of people, but we got to grow with the best and the brightest, which means you guys, please check out our website. We've got uh, various teams that need a diverse set of backgrounds. So check it out. We want to have you guys on the team. Okay, we're at T minus 14 minutes and 20 seconds to go until launch. Let's check out New Shepard as she warms up for flight. Good morning, everyone. I, uh, did not know this launch was happening until this morning when Paranor let me know. Thank you so much, Paranor. Thank you. Uh, if we're a little bit disorganized, it's because the show was going live not before we got live. So we're playing catch up, but you know, these little launchers with their ability to land back, I've come up with some days. So thank you all for being here. I'm Dr. Pamela Gay. You are watching CosmoQuest X on Twitch.tv, where we bring you live events as they happen even when we don't know they're happening ahead of time. She is New Shepard looking forward to her fifth flight to space and back on that same rocket. She's got a couple of scuff marks on her but that is what a reused look uh, reused rocket looks like so we are excited to have her back out again on the pad. It's a beautiful morning down here to launch some rockets. Okay so let's talk about over the next couple of months towards the end of this year we are going to be flying humans on top of this rocket. But the only way that it's going to work is, of course, if we do it safely. Safety is at the core of everything that we do at Blue, including the rocket itself. One of the most important subsystems that we have on that rocket is the abort motor or the escape motor. Now, the escape motor is meant to fire in the case that anything wrong is detected with the rocket. We want to get the capsule and whatever it's in it, payloads today, Perhaps uh, people in the future, we want to get it away from the booster and bring it back safely. Now, that system is completely autonomous, and uh, we've tested it that way. And let me tell you, I think the successes speak for themselves. So why don't we check out some of the highlights from those three escape tests. Now, the first one was back in 2012, as mentioned earlier. We want to make sure that we can get the booster, uh, or excuse me, the capsule away from the booster, even on the pad, even if it hasn't lifted off yet. Complete success. Next. Just a couple of years later, we did fire the escape motor at max Q during flight. Max Q, maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket, which means it's even that much more difficult to fire the escape motor away, but again, worked out perfectly. And then just a couple of months ago, we fired the escape motor up at altitude 290,000 feet, 88 kilometers up, not quite into space, but very, very high up there, and it performed perfectly. We also had the reaction control system that came in for a nice uh, stabilization of the capsule, and you see the retro thrust system there fired nicely for a soft landing here in Texas. So safety, 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 it's at the core of what we do, and it's not only on the rocket itself, but it's inside of the capsule. We have a couple of safety features that I'd like to walk you through. So why don't we check out this capsule? The big, beautiful windows, we've talked about them a lot. Nice for uh, gazing out up over 100 kilometers when you're up there in space, but we've built them uh, multi-paned acrylic windows. We've tested them extensively on the ground, pressure tested them, but we've also tested them in space. The capsule that's out there on the pad has gone to space four times and back and they've worked very nicely. The seats there, 
We've built those in-house. You see that X mechanism, the scissor mechanism, meant to take out any last vertical energy. Make sure if it's a bumpy ride, we'll make it softer for you. And then last but not least, that white paneling, acoustic paneling. We want to be able to dampen out any vibration we want from a, a hearing standpoint that it's comfortable but also safe. So a beautiful ride that we've uh, that we've designed for you aesthetically very pleasing on your way up to space but first and foremost we've built it with safety in mind okay we're at t-minus 10 minutes and 20 seconds to go until launch why don't we check out new shepherd on the pad as she warms up for her fifth flight to space and back today I don't know, but I think this might be one of the most reused rockets that we currently have. I'm trying to figure this out. I don't think that SpaceX has launched any of their rockets this many times. This is, um, as she said, one of the biggest windows on a capsule out there. And one of the things that I really appreciate about Blue Origins is unlike uh, SpaceX, they don't really have different capsules depending on if it's human or cargo they have the all right capsule. everybody welcome back we are live here in west texas waiting for new shepherd's 11th mission to space in this test program why don't we get into the profile of today's test it is what we call a nominal flight profile it's what you and i are going to be flying when we go into space later this year it means that the capsule and the booster are going to lift off together they're going to go up to 75 kilometers and the capsule is going to separate from the rocket continue up over 100 kilometers that's when you're going to get the three to four minutes of zero g freedom the taking on those beautiful views and then the capsule of course will come down under the uh, parachutes and retro thrust system that will create the air cushion just in the last milliseconds the booster itself of course will continue up to its own apogee and come in for a nice soft landing just two miles north of where it's taken off from so cool now let me tell you I think a lot about going to space these days. Of course, uh, it is uh, part of my day job, but I wanna take you on this mental journey. So let's go to space together and back. So when you guys come down later this year to go flying on New Shepard, you're gonna come about a day, a day and a half prior. We're gonna train you, make you feel comfortable. And then on the morning of, we're gonna go out to the crew tower. We're gonna send those stairs reflecting on what we are about to embark on enter into the capsule with five of your best friends it's very roomy get buckled in and then the be3 engine is going to rumble and as we ascend towards space the g's are going to come on and then main engine cutoff separation and that's when we're going to take in again the freedom of zero g turn our somersaults that's kind of what i'm looking forward to i've never been up in zero g and then also gaze out of those huge windows back down at earth the the colors of the earth popping back at us the darkness of space it's just going to be incredible and then we're going to get buckled back in come back down the chutes are going to inflate and it'll be a nice soft 15 or 16 miles an hour nice slow descent back to earth I mean, what, what I think is so cool about this upcoming experience is it's going to be the most uh, intense, adrenaline-filled moments of our lives, but also in many ways the most reflective, right? I mean, I think it's so cool that we're sitting here talking about human spaceflight as something that you and I are going to be able to do. What a time to be alive, am I right? <sighs> okay, dreamers, come back, come back with me step by step ferociously that is what we're about at blue which means that we got to focus on the step that's right in front of us which is today's mission we have 38 payloads on board why don't we send it to the pad check out new shepherd we are uh, in a brief hold that's okay that is uh that is fine with us as we've said before on several missions we spend a lot of time building the rockets designing the missions our customers of course have been designing their experiments if we need to take another minute or two before launch that is just fine with us so why don't we turn it over the pad and watch new shepherd as she gets ready for her launch today so we are at 40 50 i have no clue what the countdown clock is i think the count i have no idea what the countdown clock is i think it's counting up during the mission hold 
Yeah, that's a hold clock. So we're currently on hold, and when the clock resumes, we'll be at T minus 6 minutes and 57 seconds. So I, I need to once again thank Paranor for pointing out to me that this launch was going to happen. Um, and uh, we can all share this together as they just test. All right, thank you everybody for joining us live for New Shepard's 11th mission to space. This is the test program that continues as we march towards first human space flight later this year. We are at T minus six minutes and 57 seconds to go until launch. Our team is in a brief hold here. Just want to make sure that everybody's aligned, that the weather is all in bounds. It looks nice and calm behind me, but uh, it has been quite breezy down here in the last couple of days. And we also want to make sure that winds aloft are all within the bounds. But while we have some time, let's talk about something that is at the core of what we do at Blue Origin when building the rockets. At the base, at the heart of it all, it's the engines. Look rear propulsion engineering is key to what we do here at Blue Origin. Now I want to tell you a little bit more about one of our uh, newer engines coming down the line. The BE-3U, or the upper stage variant of the BE-3. So the BE-3 engine is the engine that is propelling New Shepard today. It is liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen that propel the rocket, but for the uh, upper stage engine, we always knew that we wanted to use hydrogen. So we knew that we were gonna upgrade this engine. To do so, there are a couple of tweaks that we're making. We're gonna put a big nozzle on the BE-3U because it's going to be the upper stage engine. We're gonna be two of those on the second stage of New Glenn, the big orbital rocket. So for in-space propulsion, it's really important. And the other thing that we're doing is we're going from two turbines on the BE-3 to one back-to-back -back turbine. So we're making those changes on the BE-3U and we're testing it here in Texas. Really, really exciting. All right, I understand that the team is out of the hold. We are at T minus six minutes and 20 seconds to go until launch. Now, I, as I mentioned, Today's launch is about those 38 payloads that are on board. We have our customers down here. They're very excited. A lot of choreography and orchestration goes to getting all of those payloads uh, ready and down here on time. So why don't we hear from them what it's like? And right now, it's really the golden age of space exploration. And it's an incredibly exciting time to be uh, you know, a student and an up-and-coming engineer. Currently, less than 600 people have flown in space. The capability of spacecraft like the New Shepard are going to allow thousands and eventually millions of people to live and work in space. New Shepard is very exciting because you know, as a suborbital launch vehicle, we can uh, very rapidly and cost-effectively send up a payload and uh, gather excellent, excellent space experience. Could we have space habitats, entire modules that self-assemble on their own, essentially with smart Legos that are tossed out into microgravity, contained, and allowed to find one another and create this shape that humans will then live inside. And it magnets on the bonding edges, so you can see here, for example, that bond snaps together. These tiles can be packed flat, like IKEA furniture for launch, but the benefit is you don't have to assemble the IKEA furniture yourself. It will, once released into a microgravity environment, the tiles find themselves and self-assemble. So this experiment is designed to provide a medical device that treats astronauts in zero gravity who have an injured and collapsed lung that has some bleeding in it. The microgravity that we get with the Blue Origin New Shepard is several minutes, and that is the long enough time frame for our experiment to work and demonstrate that it's functioning. You know, we're pioneering what this industry will look like and the impact that it will have on civilization. I love it. Our customers' enthusiasm is absolutely infectious. They really do become a part of Team Blue when they're down here. Okay, if you guys want to fly with us, check out our website. We want to fly the best of your payloads. Talking about that, I want to actually I want to send a special message to the students that are out there, to the future space explorers. We've got a special opportunity with, for you. We are running a competition with the group OK Go to send two of the coolest art projects up on New Shepard. Why don't we hear from the guys at OK Go more of the details on this contest. Hey everybody. Hey. 
Does anyone have an idea for an art project? In space? When we made our music video for Upside Down, Inside Out, we had to simulate microgravity in an airplane flying parabolas. But two groups of students will get to make an art project that really goes into space. Thanks to our friends at Cognizant, Blue Origin is letting us send two real art projects into space. The winners will work with our friends at the Playful Learning Lab at the University of St. Thomas to get their projects ready. Then your project will be sent up as a payload on the new Shepard launch vehicle. So get your friends together, get your teachers together, come up with your best ideas, because we want to send your art project to space. So cool, right? Guys, this is your time to shine. Check out the website. The deadline is May 6th. It's a, I know it's a couple days away. It's a long weekend. You got this, guys. Send something in. We want to send the two of the coolest art projects to space. That's going to be a blast. All right, we're at T-minus two minutes and 30 seconds to go until launch. Let's check out New Shepard on the pad. Again, this is the fifth flight for this rocket and this capsule. This capsule today full of 38 payloads on board. Now that capsule uh, will continue to be used for payloads. The newest capsule that's going to be flying humans later this year, it's in the barn, not too far away from me. And because it's such a, a, a special capsule to us, we actually decided to name the newest capsule that's, uh, that's just in the barn, the RSS First Step. RSS? Reusable spaceship, of course, right? And first step because it is our first uh, capsule that is going to be taking people. It's going to enable our vision of millions of people living and working in space. So cool, right? All right, the bridge is retracting. Guys, it, we're about to launch a rocket. Let's turn it over and listen in on pad audio as New Shepard comes alive for space. This is a launch launch trucker cab. They are going to be launching a series of satellites. Um, New Shepard at this point completely autonomous starting at T minus two minutes. She's going to be running through her last bit checks. There you go, aft fin checks, four of those fins supporting directional capability of the rocket. And then shortly here, we're going to see the BE3 engine nozzle gimbal also supports the directional capability of the rocket. All the while, I know our team is in mission control, keeping their eyes on the temperature and the, and the pressures in the propellant tank. Man, I have said this before, but there's nothing like a ticking clock and a rocket behind you to get your heart going. Guys, it's time to go to space. Let's get ready to rumble, New Shepard. successful launch. I am so angry at my software right now. Trying to fix, trying so hard to fix, doing the thing where I clear all the things. Look at her go. Mission Control has confirmed New Shepard has cleared the tower on her way to clear space everything. from West Texas. You can do it. You can do it. Transfer. You can follow along as she speeds up towards space. You see the top right corner of your screen. Bottom left corner of the screen is the altimeter. We're just about at max Q, maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket. Max Q confirmed. And she continues to punch her way to space for the fifth time, this rocket. Nice clean burn on the BE3 engine.
following from this outside desk a beautiful trail as she launches up towards space. We're looking for about 335,000 feet today for a max altitude. All right, those 38 payloads in there, they're starting to, they definitely by now have felt those Gs. They come on gradually. You peak at about three Gs on the way up. Our next milestone here, Miko, main engine cutoff. The engine's gonna cut off, but it's gonna continue its ascent to space, both the booster and the capsule together. Main engine cutoff is confirmed. You can also see in the top right corner of the screen that the speed is coming down. Separation is confirmed. At that point, if we were up there flying in space, we're gonna let you unbuckle, turn those somersaults. I'm definitely doing a superwoman across the cabin. There you go, you can see the two distinct craft in your screen. Capsule on the right, booster on the left. Those payloads in there Right now is when they're getting their nice, very clean micro G's. This new Shepard rocket based on the trajectory gets really nice clean G's, which is great for these experiments. All right, still, still accelerating up. We pass the Kármán line, the internationally recognized line of space. That's at about 330,000 feet. And we've hit Apogee, you see now that the speed went to zero, it's now speeding up again as the craft are coming home. Unofficial altitude, 344,000 feet or so. We're going to actually uh, confirm that number for you. And after the mission, a couple hours after the mission, we'll give you the, the official statistics. Correction, 346,000 feet or so. A nice high altitude. The higher you go, the more, the longer your zero Gs. If only we were in there, guys. It's coming. All right. The two craft are headed home. The booster on the left, the capsule on the right. The booster is going to beat the capsule home because of its, it's uh, more aerodynamically shaped than the, the capsule, which has kind of a blunt end to it. All right, right about now, the rocket itself is gonna hit what we call atmospheric pierce point. It's coming back from space into the atmosphere. It means it has air pressure for some of those aerodynamic surfaces to push against so it can maneuver itself. First of the subsystems to support the, uh, the stability of the rocket, the wedge fins, we have confirmation that they have been deployed. You're gonna see them get a little sharper in your screen. Those are based up at the top of the rocket in what we call the ring fin. Now the ring fin itself is also supporting the stability of the rocket. It centralizes the pressure. And so the rocket just on its own wants to stay nice and vertical on its way home. There you can see those wedge fins out. There are four of them, again, at the top of the rocket.
New Shepard looking nice and stable on her way home. I want everyone to appreciate that that continuous shot was taken with a ground-based telescope. All right, at about 12,000 feet, there it goes. Drag brakes. Watch as the speed of the rocket dramatically is reduced. And we're going to wait for the BE-3 engine to relight and bring her down for a nice soft landing. Texas. Look at that beautiful hover. Just magic. Look at that. And touchdown. Amazing. Beautiful. Look at those wedge fins retracting it really looks and like they just landed go the silo the the, the, uh, the drag brakes as well her work is done fifth flight to space and back for that rocket just incredible congratulations to the blue origin team on that just another beautiful flight to space and back all right well show is not over all eyes are on the capsule now with those 38 payloads on board. Again, that's a record for our new Shepard capsule. There go the shoots. There go the drogue shoots. These slow it down initially so they don't tear the big parachutes that are about to go off as well. There we go. And there are the mains. A bit of coning. But that is all right. Reefed and now full inflation of the parachutes. Picture perfect. I can see the capsule from here just off in the distance. Nice and stable descent. So they're a little less that. than a mile up right now. Shiny, happy capsule. Now that's spinning. I would not want to be on board with that spinning. Because you've just experienced all those Gs, then zero Gs, and now Look you're Look at those spinning. big, beautiful windows showing off for you. Glistening in the Texas sun. A nice, stable descent. See, it's 16, there 15 it miles spinning. an hour. Last milliseconds, we're going to get the retro thrust system that's going to fire. It's going to kick up the dust. But that's a nice air cushion for the payloads. So they're going 16 to 17 miles per hour at this point. Constant speed. Fire, fire, I fire. I see our team has already left our center here. It's going off to, uh, to recover the capsule, and there it is. Touchdown. Did anyone see the retros go off? A beautiful, beautiful launch and landing of the booster and the capsule today. Incredible. I'm telling you, th okay, this has been quite the morning. There's nothing like a, like a, a work day, quote unquote work day, when you get to launch and land rockets. Am I right? Look at those two beautiful pieces of yes, it's the engineering. Yes, background. Look at that. Again, congratulations to the whole Blue Origin team and congratulations to our customers. I know they're going to be heading out there shortly to check out their payloads. In fact, you know, their work is actually just start starting now, if you think about it. Just incredible. So as mentioned, our team is preparing the landing safety operations and recovery and we're going to be getting uh, our, our customers out there at just as soon as possible. Look at that beautiful capsule. Now again, we've got some unofficial statistics for you. We will be sending out all of the official statistics later on today. 
Mission launch time, 8.32 a.m. Central Standard Time. Maximum ascent velocity, 2,217 miles per hour, or about 3,500 kilometers per hour. Maximum altitude, 3,040, sorry, 346,406 feet, about 106 kilometers. And then mission elapse time, 10 minutes and 10 seconds. Wow, what a day here in Texas. It has been just a pleasure to be down here with you. I wanna send a special thank you and congratulations to our team, to our customers. We really wanna fly with you guys again. <sighs> I gotta catch my breath here for a second. We have so much exciting things, uh, so many exciting things happening at Blue at the moment. We want you all to be a part of it. Tune in to our next webcast, check out our website to come join the team. And until our next webcast, my name is Arian Cornell. I'm going to go do some capsule chasing myself. I'll be on our Blue Origin Instagram later on so you can follow along with me. And until our next launch, Gradatum Ferocitor. Okay, that concludes our coverage of the Blue Origin 11th launch. They showed us that their little rocket has what it takes, and I think I have doggos that can take what you have to give. Let's see, does anyone move? Ooh, I have a dog on my foot. That's where the dog was. Okay, thank you so much for the bits. Bits, give, get, doggos, Cheerios. Thank you so much. Um, yes, yeah, step by step, ferociously. They do have an excellent motto. And they have one of the cutest rockets out there. It's a little bit pornographic, but we're not going to talk about that today. Um, yeah, it's cool. And someday it'll be carrying humans. Life is good. Um, and thank you, Paranor, for finding that announcer for me on LinkedIn. Uh, she is one of my, she is flat out my favorite of these announcers across all the different, um, all the different space agencies. I just, she knows her stuff. She's not talking purely from a, a teleprompter. And she's clearly interested in what she's talking about. Now, according to the LinkedIn profile that Paranor just found, she's the director of astronaut and orbital sales. It sounds like they're selling astronauts uh, at Seattle, Washington's um, offices. She's a dual citizen. That's an interesting thing to have on your uh, LinkedIn profile. And I will be reading a lot more about her. Um, and seeing if we can get her on to talk one day. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. I am now going to get back to my second cup of coffee and working on software for cosmoquest.org slash X, your place to learn and do science. And hopefully the doing science part is coming back very, very shortly, possibly even today. So, uh, later today, Annie Wilson, our own Binary Ablaze, is going to be doing the Daily Space at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. That is 6 p.m. London time. She's going to be doing a roundup of spacecraft launches, landings, and what happened on the International Space Station. So stay tuned for that later today. We will be back again tomorrow and for many tomorrows to come. Next week, we're still working on sorting out the schedule. We may have a time shift. I'm going to be in Budapest to be speaking at the Craft Software Development Conference. I will be able to stream that or more to the point they are streaming that um, and we'll see if we can get Annie to co-stream over here on Twitch. Thank you, Prozax, for the follow. Um, so uh, we are a production of the Planetary Science Institute, a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to exploring our solar system. Learn more about the Planetary Science Institute at psi.edu. This means that your donations, not so much your bits, but your donations are tax deductible where the law allows. You can donate to us by visiting cosmoquest.org slash x slash donate. And uh, well, 
taking advantage of any of the many different methods that are up there. We are here thanks to you. This is a community-sponsored stream, and uh, we do everything we can to turn your bits and donations into, into well, first of all, happy dogs, because cuteness is sharing. Um, cuteness is saying thank you. I need my second cup of coffee. Uh, but we do everything we can to transform your support into science and science communications. So uh, I don't think I have anything else to say other than don't forget. Um, check us out, follow us, sub us on YouTube. Um, if you ever miss anything live, we have it all over on our YouTube channel. And I totally forgot to transition over so that you could see the dogs. I was just flinging them Cheerios. You couldn't see. Uh, but now you can see them. Um, okay, I am really in need of my second cup of coffee. I am going to look and see who else is streaming. And I'm going to raid in just a moment. If anyone has any suggestions, I'm always open to suggestions. It looks like Timber Anu is up and running. Um, I'm really important is discussing politics. It's too early in the day for that. Um, so let's go with Timber Anu. Give Timber a new... Um, <laughs> Um, give Timber a new, I'm laughing at the chat, a fabulous rockety welcome uh, as we raid after the credits. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say other than remember. Um, we are one world sharing one sky. And uh, get outside and look up. Wherever you are in the world, have a fabulous morning, evening, or afternoon. <laughs> Bye-bye.